for its, its global, it, but its campaign, its local campaign, which is also ties into the global campaign in terms of being plastic free. And so they are celebrating Plastic Free July, and they have a number of activities that are planned in order to bring awareness to plastic pollution and how we can eliminate it, eradicate it here in St. Kitts and Nevis. I have on the panel Mrs. Dianeel Taylor Williams, who is Assistant Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism and Chairperson of the St. Kitts Sustainable Destination Council. Welcome, Dianeel. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I also have Kenesha Lewis, who hails from Nevis, and she is a teacher, I was told, at the Nevis Sixth Form. Welcome, Kenesha. Thank you for having me. I also have Mr. Darian Ed Mead, who works in the Department of Environment as the Environment Education Officer. Welcome, Darian. Thank you. Right. And later on, I'm going to have on the program Tishana Saida Jenkins, who will join us. Of course, we know that the Caribbean is extremely dependent on tourism. It is the largest sector in the Caribbean, the tourism sector. And we know what is happening right now in the world, the COVID-19 pandemic, and how the tourism industry has been severely affected by the COVID-19. Hotels are closed. There are no cruise ships coming to our ports. Restaurants were closed and bars were closed. They are now open in St. Kitts and Nevis, restaurants and bars. Many people unemployed who work in the tourism industry. Airports closed and so on. And so the tourism sector has taken a very hard blow from the COVID-19 pandemic. But we're here to discuss plastic pollution and how plastic pollution is also giving a very hard blow to the tourism sector. How are the two connected? I want to start with that question, and I will ask Dianeel, what does plastic pollution have to do with the tourism sector? Sure. You um, can give your introduction, and then you can go into my answering my question. Okay. Um, as, as Mr. Williams indicated, um, we are a country that is heavily dependent on tourism, like most of our Caribbean neighbors. As a matter of fact, it is said that um, one in every, every four employees in St. Kitts and Nevis are employed, whether directly or indirectly, in the tourism industry. And so, and it would have been brought home even more with the closure of um, the industry due to the global pandemic. Now, some people will say, why are you talking about plastics at this time? We are concerned about the closure of the industry. But plastic is another problem, a perennial problem to the tourism industry. Most people who travel, especially to the Caribbean, they're traveling to experience nature um, and the sceneries. They're traveling to islands so that they can um, participate. Many of our visitors, that is what they're traveling to the Caribbean to do. And what we have found over the years is most of the plastic uh, waste ends up in our marine environment. And as I've said um, before, especially when I'm speaking to um, young children, why would you leave your country, you're traveling on vacation, you would have saved up your money to go to a country that's filthy, 
full of plastic debris. Um, and so tourism is in, impacted in that way. We are also impacted because many of the visitors to our islands also travel to en enjoy our fresh foods, especially things like lobsters and other seafood. And if the plastic is ending up in the marine environment, then it is also ending up in the marine species, and which we are going to then be producing as food for consumption by locals and our visitors. So it does make a big difference in terms of what we are offering to visitors to our destination, in terms of the aesthetics, the food. It also can create a problem for the persons who are working in the tourism industry, the workers themselves in terms of health concerns. So people have, um, using plastics, there's an opportunity for people to become ill because there are health concerns, especially when we consider things like styrofoam, uh, which is a major a factor in some of the illnesses. As a matter of fact, scientists have been saying that styrofoam um, use can be attributed to some of the cancers that we see um, happening. And so we have to be concerned because of the, the issue of the people involved, the social issues in terms of our people's well-being. Tourism is a labor-intensive industry. And if the people are sick, then we do not have the labor that we need that is necessary to work in an industry such, such as this. So we have to be concerned on three levels. People, planet, profit, and that is what sustainability is all about. Right. So we have to keep our planet sustainable. Now, the environment. Of course, plastic pollution is one of the most pressing environmental issues today. And it has been affecting our environment in a, in a big way. And even the production of plastics, the production is derived from oil and gas and coal, which also contributes to the emission of greenhouse gases and so on. Now, Darion, you work in the Department of Environment, and you have a role to play in educating our public in terms of plastic pollution. Now, what are some of the most pressing environmental issues when it comes to plastic and the disposal of plastic, plastic pollution? All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Williams. Let me first say that the, the things that we, we must um, remember about plastic is that it is cheap. There are three characteristics that I always look at. It is cheap. It is light and it is durable. And um, we have to understand that when we live in a society and you put those three things together, you know, people now always gravitate to the things that, that, that especially when you put a, a cost to it, if it is cheap, it's what we're going to use. So over time, you would realize that human activities, the things that we do, whether it's shopping or uh, dispose of stuff, whether for, um, for, for storage and so forth, we always gravitate to something of plastic. Now, as we continue to use, and we, we, we do a lot of single-use, single use, we discard. And over time, the, the amount, it increases, and as a result, we, we always tend to dispose of our waste, whether it's plastic or so forth, but since we deal with plastic, in a manner that is not um, sustainable for the environment. So when we, when we look at the plastic and the environment and why is it important and how, what the things that we need to do, we're saying that um, one of the things that we must understand is that plastic is a growing disaster. It's a growing disaster. And I think, is, Mr. Leslie Williams, you mentioned the fact that plastic contains a, a, a particular chemical. So as, as, as it starts to break down, as we call it, or as it, as it starts to you know, come down into the little plastic dust or the microplastic, you're going to realize that these, this material or this chemical can enter into our surface. It can affect our water. Ms. Diane mentioned the fact that um, it ends up into our ocean or marine. You also mentioned the fact that um, animals or, 
or married animals would eat or consume the same plastic, and then we in turn come after and we eat these same, these same marine animals or maybe land animals, and we too are consuming the same plastic. So we are saying that it is very important that we, we try to find our ways, or find ways in which we can minim minimize the use or our dependencies on, the, on plastic as the negative effects. The negative effects of plastic way, 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 way is more than the, 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 the positive that it brings. Right. I, I think that somehow with plastics, there is a solid waste management problem. And sometimes we don't have anybody from solid waste management on the, the panel. But it has to do with how we dispose of our garbage. And a lot of it has to do with plastic. And then where does that plastic end up? So are we properly disposing? of our garbage, um, which, which includes a lot of plastic. And the garbage ends up on our beaches, and then it ends up in our oceans. And garbage that ends up in our oceans, here in St. Kitts, can end up somewhere over in Africa, and so on. Am I not correct? That's correct. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Right. So, Kanisha, tell us, how do you think that people can better dispose of plastic, single-use plastic, so that it does not end up in the ocean and become a threat to marine life and so on? Thank you for that question. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, so ultimately, the goal is to minimize plastic use altogether, especially single-use plastics. As we talk about the chemicals in plastics, one of the things they've taken out of plastics is a substance called BPA. Bisphenol A has been linked to brain development issues in younger children. So if you're buying a plastic bottle now in the stores, you will see that it says BPA-free. Okay, because that chemical was affecting, um, has been linked to brain development issues. So ultimately, we want to move away from single-use plastics. And there are many initiatives that we can put in place to deal with this. One of the things on my desk, I have my reusable water bottle. And so we can start to look at reusable containers. Okay, one of the things we also do with our school is we recycle our plastic bottles and when we say plastic bottles, that can be the water bottles, that are detergent bottles, and all other recyclable plastics. We collect them currently at the school, and then they're sent over here to Admirals Recycling in St. Kitts. It's a way then of reducing landfill capacity, um, increasing landfill capacity, reducing the amount of landfill waste in our societies. Our landfills fill up quickly, and with more and more things being imported into the country, we need a waste management strategy that deals with that. Ideally, we want to move away from that problem. So when we talk about landfill space, we are increasing what we call land take. Land take means that rather than keeping this space green, as we look at Nevis naturally, we want to promote green tourism. We want to be eco-friendly. And so if we want to promote Nevis naturally, we want to reduce land take, keep spaces as green as possible. And if our landfills have to expand because we continue to consume plastic products, then it means less green space. So we must be practical and reasonable as well with the decisions that we make. Plastic is cheap now, but it's expensive in the long run. Mm -hmm. So we, when it comes to landfills, let us recycle when we can, but ultimately move away from these plastics when possible. Yes. Yeah. I am always amazed that when I go to the supermarket, I am buying bread. The bread is already in plastic. And then they put the bread in two other plastic bags. So you can see that we, 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 it's, a, it's an excessive use, really, of plastic. And where does that plastic end up? It ends up in drains, and it ends up on our beaches, and it ends up all over the place. Sometimes, the, 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 the amount of plastic that I have at home, sometimes it almost always is choking me. <laughs> the plastic is choking me. There's so much plastic. Dianil. Now, 
how does plastic pollution affect our marine biodiversity? I know that many people come to the Caribbean and they, they go to the beaches and they want to snorkel and they want to see, you know, a lot of uh, marine life and all that sort of thing. How is that affected by plastic pollution? One of the things we have found um, with respect to the plastic pollution and our marine um, biodiversity is, for example, uh, one of the, the, the examples that I use which makes it easier is the turtle. So we have plastic bags which turtles often mistake for jellyfish. They eat it. What happens to them is that the plastic gets stuck inside them. It gives them the false feeling that they're full and so they might not feed, or on the other hand, they're hungry, but because the plas their stomachs are jammed full of plastics, they're very hungry, but there's no space for the food to get down into their body. The body cannot absorb the plastic, and so they suffocate and die. Some other animals, for example, we've seen pictures of crabs with um, a bottle cap over their head, or the rings from the cans, the six-pack of um, soda cans around um, some marine animals, therefore suffocating them. The birds, they are also suffocated because of the amount of plastics they consume from our beaches. Now, when people are coming here to snorkel and to dive, they're coming to look at what the marine environment has to offer. If our turtles die, because the turtles are known as the lawnmowers or the sheep of the reef, and so if the turtles are not keeping the reef free of all the algae, because that's what they usually consume besides the jellyfish, they keep it at a, a, a manageable level. If they are unable to eat or if the amount of turtles we have have lessened, and last year I got some really shocking information from our, one of our partners in the St. Kitts um, Destination Council. One of our partners which, um, is the... Sink it's Sea Turtle Monitoring Network. And what they pointed out to us is that they had a drastically low number of turtles coming to nest, leatherbacks coming to nest, nest at, um, on St. Kitts last year as compared to 10 years previously. Now, if you have less of these turtles available to keep our reefs clean, the green and, and, and the hawksbill, it means that the reefs can become overrun. If the reefs become overrun, then the young turtles, the, sorry, the young fish, because that's the nursery for the young fish, they would not have an opportunity to thrive, and so they'll die. So then our fish supply will be reduced. The variety of um, marine species, because if the turtles die out, then there are no turtles. You'll be pretty soon telling people, we used to have the species of turtles. Children will not know what you're talking about because they would have died out. And so we have those issues where you kill the fish stock, you kill out um, some of the other animals within, within the marine environment. There's an overgrowth of algae, which is not natural because there's a balance. Everything has a balance. And that, that is what sustainability is about. It's finding that balance between our people, our planet, and our pro and, and livelihoods, which we call profits, right? And so if there's not that balance, things are going to be out of whack, and there's going to have to be some adjustment. We also have the issues of coral bleaching. So then we have that issue. If there's coral bleaching, there's also no livelihood, no life in the reefs. Visitors are not going to travel from their countries where they pay high amounts of money to come to our destination to visit a reef that has been bleached and that there's no life. People are coming to see things, and so we have to ensure that we take care of these things. It might seem simple, but if each one of us does something, then it makes a big difference. And the, the, the production of plastics is increasing tremendously over the years since it, was first, um, since it was first brought into being, which was in the 1950s. Plastics are found everywhere. And so... The, the, the major challenge, though, is not the, the plastic, because as Darian said, plastic was made to be durable. But what we're having is that we're using something that was meant to last long for one time, one time only. And so that is where the problem comes in. The chemicals are an issue. 
the fact that we're using something that was intended to last hundreds of years for sometimes minutes, that is where we're going to create um, problems in terms of our marine biodiversity and the ability for us, because we do not have any other resources at the moment in St. Kitts in terms of natural resources outside of our people. And so the people have been in, in, um, introduced to tourism, but people are only going to travel to your destination if there's something for them to see and to experience. And if it's not good for us, the residents, then it cannot be good for visitors. The, the people are now monitoring things like that. Before they make decisions to travel to a destination, they're looking to see what you are doing for your own people, how you take care of your environment before they make a decision to um, take their hard-earned money to travel to your destination. Thank you so much, uh, Diane Neal. We are going to go to a short video called Marine Pollution Threatens the Caribbean Sea. The Caribbean Sea is a lifeline for millions of people. They depend on its health for food security, jobs, and livelihoods. Yet this ocean wealth is under threat. Decades ago, many Caribbean beaches and seashores were pristine. And now, waves of plastic waste often wash up on the shoreline, especially after a big storm. Entire marine ecosystems and the natural assets that these countries depend on are being undermined by marine pollution, which includes plastics, sewage, agricultural runoff, and oil. Caribbean small island nations are particularly vulnerable. Marine pollution directly affects their economies and livelihoods. It decreases tourism while also affecting human health. Climate change is creating even more pressure on people and their communities. This amplifies the impact of marine pollution and the urgency to support healthy oceans. The Caribbean region is among the first to move toward a blue economy, a pathway to help these countries drive sustainable growth while also protecting marine and coastal resources. For many countries, reducing marine pollution, and especially plastics, is a top priority. About one-third of Caribbean countries have already banned plastic in some form, from grocery bags to styrofoam cups. Many countries are joining this monumental first step to combat marine pollution. Tackling marine pollution requires a suite of solutions, starting with robust analytics that inform investments and policy reforms. We need to continue raising awareness while developing partnerships and promoting innovation. These steps are crucial to developing the resilient blue economy that people depend on. Together, we can create a blue legacy for the Caribbean. There is no time to waste. Working for you. Okay. We have seen with that video how plastic pollution is a problem in the Caribbean Sea. And of course, many of us in the Caribbean, we depend on the sea for our livelihood. And if this continues, then it's a threat to our livelihood. We have many people who are fishers, and of course we depend on the sea for tourism and so on, so it can seriously impact the livelihood of Caribbean people. Now, Darian, one of the things is that plastic is not biodegradable. It does not 
break down easily. And how is that impacting? The very fact that it is not biodegradable, what does that create, one? And two, what would you propose to be alternatives to plastic? All right, the, the fact that plastic is, um, is not easily broken down, what happens is that wherever, whatever you do with the plastic, it normally doesn't stay there. For example, we say that it is light. So if, if, if I dispose of my waste, let's say, in a garbage bin that is not properly um, enclosed, what happens is that that bag travels distances. We said that plastic also contains a chemical. If, if, it, if, this, if it starts to, you know, as I said, turn into microplastics and so forth, break down in certain areas, you're going to realize that animals and so forth also consume them. That's another issue. Now, again, because plastic does not break, break down, it's also a threat. When it gets to our landfills, in fact, in fact even before it gets to our landfill, we, whenever you, you dispose of it at home, it's already a problem. The time it travels maybe from the, the, garbage, the garbage truck to the landfill, it's also another problem. Because as, it, as the garbage truck could be traveling, we could also have pollution. Let's just assume that, as we said, it's light, it starts blowing, again, we have pollution. When it gets to the landfill, if it is not, again, if it is not properly disposed of in a way in which it, that the wind cannot move, move it around, again, it's another a problem. And you ask the question, what are some of the things that we can do? Now, there are many alternatives that are out there, and the thing about the alternatives, they, yes, they might be more expensive than the, the plastic, but we also have to think of the fact that um, Yes, the plastic, the plastic is cheap, but the alternatives are safer. The Department of Environment have been for months, and in fact years, we have been trying to do a lot of different awareness programs where we have been showing persons of some of the things that they can use instead of the, the normal styrofoam or the, the plastic that you get from the supermarket. We, we, there was a point in time when I could remember where we, we were distributing some reusable shopping bags to different supermarkets trying to encourage persons to, to use those. I'm not sure if they were too big because, you know, I mean, we have not seen those um, resurfacing in the, the, the supermarkets too often. I know Daniel had a nice little small one there with a keyring or something, which was real nice. Uh, but I'm not so sure how, how, how much Daniel has seen that also. I don't know if it was big enough, Daniel. I like, I like the idea, but for some of, some of us who shop heavily, it, it just means that we just have to get something, you know, bigger. We can also look at other alternatives like the straws. The, you know, some persons have been using metal. There are some who have been using bamboo. There are some who have been using um, alternatives made from the sugar cane. So the alternatives are there, but I think what is going to happen is that um, we have retailers, manufacturers, or even consumers, retailers, and so forth. We'll be looking at how are we going to be benefit from the fact that you're asking us to use alternatives and the plastic is cheap, meaning you're asking us to spend more money. So we can also understand I mean, some of their concerns, but we also have to look at the, long, the big picture. We are, we, are, we, are, we are emphasizing the fact that plastic, yes, it's durable, but the, the health impacts are much greater. And we, we want to see, find ways in which we can minimize the use of plastic until we get to the point where we can say plastic is no more. It will be a, a very, very ambitious ambitious um, thought, because we realize that everything has some form of plastic attached to it. But these are just some ways, and if I could just mention, as Daniel was speaking to the marine environment, one of the things that the Department of Environment um, do is that every year we have our annual coastal cleanup, and as we, we clean the marine areas, one of the things that we, we realize is that plastic is the, 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 the main culprit in terms of the debris that we find. So it's normally a lot of plastic pieces, plastic bottles, um, the, the, the food wrappers, like the chips and so forth, maybe, especially, it depends on the type of beach. For example, if it is one of Daniel's beaches, like the, you know, saying that for your recreational beaches, you know, the, the debris that we find here will be different to, for example, what we're going to find at Keys Beach, which, you know, have um, means for fishing, fishing um, so forth. So we're, we're doing what we can, and we, we're, we're, we're I'm happy that um, Daniel 
and her team even see it fit to have the Department of Environment share their views on this topic. Right. You know, while we focus a lot on our beaches and our marine life, because that's where a lot of plastic um, end up, also we have to think of our guts. People throw plastic a lot in our guts, and plastics also end up in our drains and so on. And that creates a problem, especially when we have heavy rainfall and so on. Drainage is affected, which can create flooding and all of that sort of a thing. Now, now Dianeal, this is the fourth year. Is it the fourth year that you're having the plastic free July? Yes. It's your fourth year. Fourth year locally. Your fourth year locally. Yes. And your goal, of course, is that of education and awareness. But sometimes you educate all you want and you try to make people aware. That is very good. Some people will change their habits. Some people will not. The way that some countries are going is that of legislation. Have we considered going that route in St. Kitts and Nevis? Actually, we have, and Darion is actually in a better position to respond to that. We have supported them, um, the Ministry of Tourism, in their efforts to um, have policy change with respect to the banning of single-use plastics. Um, Darian couldn't speak to that. I know some, a paper was presented to the cabinet late last year on the issue of banning plastics, but I'll let Darian give more details. All right, so as Darian mentioned, there is no submission that was made to, to cabinet and so forth, and, but as, as, as I stand, uh, as, as I sit, <laughs> as I sit this, this afternoon, I'm not sure, sure how far it has been. But what I can say, though, I know part of the plan was to do more or less a phase-out process where a few items would have been identified and focused on, and a period would have been given for um, persons who import our supermarkets or so forth to, to use as much of those stuff that they have in land um, without the, um, importing any other. So it's like that kind of process in terms of phase out, and then eventually they will move on to maybe a plastic bottle and so forth until we get to the point where we can say that um, there is no more import on, on plastic. But one of the things that we, we, we are going to be tasked with is the fact that the Department of Environment is now in a new ministry, which we have a new PS, we have a new um, minister. So it means now we will have to also go back and push this agenda forward to ensure that the the plastic issue remains a top priority for the Department of Environment and by extension, the, the other retailers or consumers who have been calling the department trying to find out um, what is the next step or what is the department or the government is going to do as it relates to the plastic issue. Right, so if, if we are going to go the route of legislation where we ban single-use plastics, what will we replace it with? Slowest. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Um, as we talk about alternatives to plastics and single-use plastics in particular, one of the things we've discussed, because as an environmental t science teacher, I have students who are now very passionate. The number of students each year increases. And so for them, certain actions are logical. Unfortunately, perhaps we have forgotten them. Mm -hmm. So in terms of alternatives to the plastics and things we can promote, one of the things we're looking back is at the past. Before we had plastics, what were we doing? Persons, when you go into, what I've experienced going into a restaurant is when you go in, immediately I'm asked, what size of styrofoam container do I want? Not whether I want to dine in or take it out. I think the first option should be, what size of plate do you want? Because mm -hmm. the plate is reusable. Additionally, for myself personally, when I know I am planning to buy lunch, I take my own container with me. So those are options we can offer to people. Take your own containers with you and have them re um, refilled if it's a water bottle or have the persons put your food inside there. In terms, some ideas we threw around were in, let's say persons who bring their own containers, 
you give them a stamp, you know, like in some countries you get a stamp each time, and when you get to 10, you get your free ice cream. What can a retailer offer if a person were to come in with their own container and on their 10th purchase, because they're regular, reliable customers, what, let's promote, let's give them a candy, let's give them a treat, something for that day. And we're now, they don't have to purchase the plastics and we're reducing plastic waste in that measure. Other alternatives we can consider, as he mentioned, the bamboo straws and all these things. We talked about, and uh, you mentioned the convenience of the bag, the plastic bag when you go into the stores. In Nevis, where I'm from, we would go out when I was younger. We would go to the bread bus or whomever was coming by, and you took your own crocus bag with you that you likely made yourself. And you would put your bread in that for convenience, um, because it's cheaper and all these things, it's faster. We, the bag is pre-bagged like you said, the bread is pre-bagged, it's in the bag, and then they just, you get it very quickly and they're on their way again. That saves us a few seconds, but what does it do to the environment in the long term? So we see the short term, we see the short term money saving, but we do not necessarily recognize the long term environmental cost and implications with these decisions. And there are many, many other practical, traditional things that we used to do that we can revert to, to solve some of the issues we have. I think one of the reasons why plastic is so plentiful, and sometimes when you go to the, the supermarket and so on, they're happy to give you two, and they're happy to give you four and so on. I mean, it's free. You don't have to pay for it. Maybe if there's a price that is introduced in terms of you have to pay for this plastic, then maybe they will not be so generous um, and people will not, you know, go I, for I, the... Mm -hmm. I actually had um, some information on a study that was done in the UK where they introduced a 5p charge for the bag. Yeah. And they said it was reduced by about 70 to 80% people taking. And it's only 5p that they had to pay for a bag, but the fact that they have to people pay, walk. people walked with their bag. So it doesn't have to be any tremendous amount that is charged for the bags. It's just the fact that people have to pay that they don't want to, and they're forced. Because when we started our um, campaign, we were um, donating bags for a contribution to the Heart of Sinkis Foundation. And each time we approached someone offering them one of our reusable bags, they would tell us, you know, I have a lot of those at home. But the, and we were selling them at the supermarket. So they are going into the supermarket, and they'll tell you, I have a lot of those at home, but yet they are going to the supermarket without them, right? Because they get them from all over the place. But because there's no cost to it, the, people don't make the effort to get it. Some of them will tell you, it's in the vehicle that they drove to the supermarket. But they're not even going to bother to turn back because the supermarket is going to supply them with free plastic bags. You know, not thinking about the repercussions of having um, all these plastic bags. Some people will tell you, I have so many that after a while, some people will say at first, well, when I get them, I, would, I can use them for disposing my garbage. But then sometimes it's so many of them that I just throw them out because mm -hmm. it's becoming too much and it could, be cre it could create a problem in terms yeah. of... Um, Ha nesting for roaches and stuff like that. So you start cleaning and you, yeah. you just dump them. You would only think it would make sense that, you know, you're accumulating all this plastic in your home. And because you keep going to the supermarket and you get getting fresh ones and bringing Each them time. into your home, rather than using those that you already have to take to the supermarket. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because it's free. Mm -hmm. It's free. Yeah. You know. I think you might have benefited from it where the department had uh, purchased some reusable shopping yes. bags. Nice now, the, pur the purpose of the bag was to really to encourage persons to take them to the supermarkets. But what I realized is that persons are now using these, th these bags as town bags. You know, they come to, bag to town with these bags on their shoulder with, the with their stuff in it. So, yeah. it's the purse. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if somewhere between the, the message the message didn't translate properly, but <laughs> we are saying I mean the, the point that you raise is well received in the fact that I think you know with awareness and so forth I mean I think we can tackle the the, the plastic situation. Right. Okay. We are going to take a look at another video. What really happens to the plastic waste 
you throw away. It's important that you, you know this. And then when we come back, we are going to go to the phone lines and we are going to look at some of the activities that are planned for Plastic Free July. <music> This is the story of three plastic bottles, empty and discarded. Their journeys are about to diverge with outcomes that impact nothing less than the fate of the planet. But they weren't always this way. To understand where these bottles end up, we must first explore their origins. The heroes of our story were conceived in this oil refinery. The plastic in their bodies was formed by chemically bonding oil and gas molecules together to make monomers. In turn, these monomers were bonded into long polymer chains to make plastic in the form of millions of pellets. Those were melted at manufacturing plants and reformed in molds to create the resilient material that makes up the triplets' bodies. Machines filled the bottles with sweet, bubbly liquid, and they were then wrapped, shipped, bought, opened, consumed, and unceremoniously discarded. And now here they lie, poised at the edge of the unknown. Bottle one, like hundreds of millions of tons of his plastic brethren, ends up in a landfill. This huge dump expands each day as more trash comes in and continues to take up space. As plastics sit there being compressed amongst layers of other junk, rainwater flows through the waste and absorbs the water-soluble compounds it contains, and some of those are highly toxic. Together, they create a harmful stew called leachate, which can move into groundwater, soil, and streams, poisoning ecosystems and harming wildlife. It can take bottle one an agonizing 1,000 years to decompose. Bottle 2's journey is stranger, but unfortunately no happier. He floats on a trickle that reaches a stream, a stream that flows into a river, and a river that reaches the ocean. After months lost at sea, he's slowly drawn into a massive vortex where trash accumulates, a place known as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Here, the ocean's currents have trapped millions of pieces of plastic debris, this is one of five plastic-filled gyres in the world's seas, places where the pollutants turn the water into a cloudy plastic soup. Some animals, like seabirds, get entangled in the mess. They, and others, mistake the brightly colored plastic bits for food. Plastic makes them feel full when they're not, so they starve to death and pass the toxins from the plastic up the food chain. For example, it's eaten by lanternfish. The lanternfish are eaten by squid. The squid are eaten by tuna. And the tuna are eaten by us. And most plastics don't biodegrade, which means they're destined to break down into smaller and smaller pieces called microplastics, which might rotate in the sea eternally. But Bottle 3 is spared the cruel purgatories of his brothers. A truck brings him to a plant where he and his companions are squeezed flat and compressed into a block. Okay, this sounds pretty bad too, but hang in there. It gets better. The blocks are shredded into tiny pieces, which are washed and melted so they become the raw materials that can be used again. As if by magic, Bottle 3 is now ready to be reborn as something completely new. For this bit of plastic with such humble origins, suddenly, the sky is the limit. Working for you. to plastic waste when you throw it away. We are going to go to the phone lines and the numbers to call are 466-2666. That's 466-2666. 662-8674. 662-8674. 
767-4765 and the overseas number 1239-645-4500. 1239-645-4500. Now, we have been joined Tishana Sider Jenkins has joined us. Welcome, Tishana. Thank you for having me. Right. Tishana, the ministry has a calendar of activities for this month, Plastic Free July. Could you highlight some of those activities that are planned for this month and sort of the rationale behind the activities? Um. Well, what we wanted to highlight um, this year, we wanted to play on the, to get more youths involved in the plastic um, practices, more sustainable practices. One of the biggest things that we are launching during this week is a spotted campaign. And that is basically, um, we have taken steps to reduce single-use plastics over the years. So we noticed some businesses has already taken the initiative to incorporate biodegradable items such as paper straws, paper bags, food containers, utensils. Ms. Lois mentioning uh, persons bringing their own container to restaurants. This is why we decided to launch this campaign. So we want to give recognition to these individuals and establishment who has made these changes. So we encourage people when they see um, these businesses or even someone in your family, your friend, who is practicing these sustainable ways to highlight their efforts by basically um, mentioning the, the, the establishment or the individual and using the hashtag spotted um, plastic free SKN, share if you care, and plastic be gone 2020. We also wanted to show people how you can take your plastics and recycle. There's a term one man trash is another man treasure. So, this is uh, we decided to make a DIY tutorial where we showcase one of our local entrepreneurs, Vincia Collins of Vincia Creation, where she re um, repurposed and made some jewelry out of a simple Clorox bottle. So the, the video is basically, is basically intended to get our residents to be more creative. Instead of just taking the plastic bottle and disposing of it, take it and repurpose it into something good. We realize on social media, social media is a big aspect when it comes to young persons. And we realize a trending thing right now is TikTok. So we wanted to engage the youth more. So we're going to have a TikTok challenge for everyone to take part. What we're going to encourage people to do is to um, record themselves at scenes around the island. Maybe if they want to go to the beach, to the restaurant, to a supermarket, but just showcasing how they are being sustainable by walking with their bag, their own container, using a stainless steel straw, just making it fun. And we also want to play a game too, because we're keeping in the social media mind frame, because we want to engage the young people, because we, as adults, we are influenced by the youth. A little child usually manipulate their parents to do anything that they want to do. So there's a game, I don't know who remember the games, where, where is Waldo, where you have to basically pick out Waldo out of a crowd. So we came up with a recyclable bunch. This, um, we have Miss Baggy, who is the mother. 
Mr. Botley, the father, mugs the son, sipping the shredded daughter. And each week we will post a picture on our social media page, Think It's Sustainable Destination Council, on Facebook and Instagram. And I'll allow um, patrons to just look at the picture and try to pick out where is these items. And the first person to answer correctly would win um, a sustainable item. We also want to highlight that we are also celebrating Restaurant Week in the month of July. Restaurant Week has been um, postponed basically for until 2021 based on the, academic, the pandemic that we are going through right now. But we wanted to still keep our um, patrons involved and keep the public involved in Restaurant Week. So we came up with a virtual cooking challenge on social media as well to allow people to because we realized when we was in quarantine everyone became a chef <laughs> everyone stayed home and they came up with creative things to cook and you know came up with a recipe so we want to keep that momentum going and have people just re um, record themselves um, cooking, showing us their skills, showing us how you could incorporate the past main ingredients of Restaurant Week into your recipes and have a competition out of it. Finished? Yes. Good. Now, of course, we know that plastic has been a friend and plastic has been a foe. It has been a friend because its use in our lives, we need plastic. However, it's the single-use plastics that we are basically so much focused on. Now, let's look at COVID-19, the pandemic. And more than ever, you are hearing that healthcare workers that they need personal protective equipment, what we refer to as PPE. And that involves the use of plastic. Making them involves the use of plastic. So we have masks, we have gloves, we have the, the facial shield, and so on. And some of these things are disposable. You use them and then you throw them away. Now, here we have it again, single use. So what happens? The mask and the gloves, they find their way into the ocean. What do you think of that, Diane Neal? I think it's very unfortunate. Um, we, we have to use the items. It is, it is a must if we are to prevent the, the transmission of the dreaded um, coronavirus. However, I think the way we dispose of our waste is where the problem comes because we've, we've seen many um, situations of indiscriminate dumping and I happen to be a part of an organization, and a local organization where there, some, some waste was found on a local beach um, which included some of those same um, types of equipment. Okay. And it did not have to end up there. Um, we, we, they needed to be disposed of properly. Um, the other thing is that... Okay, Daniel, sorry to interrupt you there. We do have a caller working for you. Good afternoon. Hello? Working for you, good afternoon. We are not hearing that person. Nothing is coming through. So, Dianil, we can continue. Okay. Um, so, I was speaking about the other issue with respect to re reusable items, because one of the concerns that has been raised with COVID-19 is the fact that people, especially for dining out, um, they, there's more use, there's greater use of disposable items. 
And there's also the myth that um, you cannot use your reusable items during the pandemic. Matter of fact, some establishments have already said that you, for example, you can't bring your reusable Starbucks has said that you cannot bring your reusable coffee container for them because they're concerned about their staff touching those reusable containers. But scientists have found, as a matter of fact, 100 scientists have come together and published a statement to reassure people that reusable, using reusable containers is still safe. As a matter of fact, the virus lives longer on plastic than it does on wood and paper. Mm -hmm. Right? So we, we can dismiss that in terms of it being unsafe for persons to use reusable items like the stainless steel. I know stainless steel is one of the, the areas that there's concern, but there are other items that can be used. We also have other types of plastic. While it is that 99% of our plastic is made from wood and coal, there's a small percentage of plastic that's made from other um, compostable um, ingredients like the corn cellulose. This biodegradable, you're it, talking about biodegradable compostable, plastic. Compostable. Compostable. Plastic, plastic yes. Mm -hmm. Right? It's made from corn cellulose, and we know corn is organic. Yes. Right? So the, what we might need to look at is creating plastics, if we really do still need plastics, for the single-use items, especially in the health care when we're dealing with corona, but ensuring that it is made from these items, which are either biodegradable or compostable. And also dismissing the myth that using reusable items can cause a further spread of the disease. What we need to do, and, and, and I hear the CMO stressing it over and over, is about being clean, washing with soap and water, the best uh, response mm -hmm. to the spread of the coronavirus. So it's the same thing. If you're going to wash your hands with soap and water, why then would you not wash your utensils, your reusable utensils with soap and water so that they would be safe for you to use. Yeah. So those are some of the things that we need to focus on um, and thereby reduce the amount of single-use plastics we are dependent on. Okay, w what is the, Kenesha, what sort of collaboration does Nevis have with St. Kitts in terms of this campaign um, in terms of being plastic free. How do we want to rid the Federation? We are two countries, I mean two islands, one country. Okay, well the Ministry of Tourism has partnered with us at the Charleston Secondary School and Nevis Sixth Farm College to assist with our recycling program. I mentioned earlier that we send recyclables to St. Kitts and that's with the group called C's, Charleston Secondary Environmental Awareness Society. And that group, one of the initiatives we have, just one of the initiatives, is to collect plastic bottles and aluminum cans and other materials that are recyclable and get them shipped over for recycling. And the Ministry of Tourism, under the PS, John Hanley, are joining with us to help with this initiative. Another thing they do it as part of the initiative here we in do July have a call. is working for you. Good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. Um, this question is for... Working for you, good afternoon. Hello. Yes, hello, good afternoon. Um, is there a particular song or mix we must use for the TikTok challenge? Yes, actually. Um, there's a song um, that's called Hey Hey Who's Next? It's a popular, um, because TikTok is a series of 30 seconds to 60 seconds videos. So right now there's a popular DJ mix that's called Who's Next? And it, it, it goes with um, the agenda, what we're trying to, to, trying to achieve. Because after pl plastic, what's next is the sustainable um, items, such as the, the paper bag, the reusable bag the reusable bottle, the stainless steel straw. So we found that DJ Mix was fitting for the TikTok challenge. Okay. Can you share? Okay. So to continue, some of the other initiatives that we have taken at the school 
when we, we encouraged the students to bring in their plastic bottles, and so we had a campaign, a competition, where to raise awareness of what we were doing, and it's still ongoing, and so the winning class, we gave them reusable bottles, re reusable bottles, as well as bags that they could go shopping with, reusable bags as well. And then as a second measure now, with those reusable bottles, we wanted to promote um, using these bottles and saving your money and water. So if you go to the store and you buy a small bottle of water close to the school, that is about $3. Depending on the size of your bottle, we charge you as little as um, a dollar or a dollar fifty to refill. So that is savings and that's reducing plastic waste. And so we set up in one of the spaces a water fountain. And so you come in and you refill your bottle. And we encourage you, if you don't have a reusable bottle, to purchase a reusable bottle. So we're also decreasing plastic waste through small measures, and we've taken a lot of small steps to encourage that change in habits. Mm -hmm. Our next step is to reach out, as I was saying, to businesses to, let, to encourage them to promote bringing your own container or dining in. One of the things, as we talk about the interconnectedness of our society, one of the things that disconnects us is we've changed our dining habits. So we purchase our food and we're out two seconds later. However, if we sit in and dine in, we're saving on plastic waste and we're building community because ultimately you do notice the person next to you. You start to develop that connection. And over time, we're going to recreate a society that looks out for each other and that cares about each other. So we want to now reach out to businesses as one of our initiatives to help reduce plastic waste in that sense as well. And finally, the Ministry of Tourism has what they call the Plastics Potted Garden. That's one of the initiatives that we're working with here, with their program here as well. And what we're just, it's a simple thing. And we used to do this, is rather than go to the store and buy a potted pot, um, a pot for potting your plants, Let's use these plastic containers that we already have. It will reduce the length of time from when it, well, it will increase the time from when it was made to when it ultimately ends up in a landfill or is recycled because there's a limit to how much time plastics can be recycled. So let's delay that and put it to another purpose. And so we're encouraging this initiative at home and that will help with our coronavirus initiative as well and will help with our dining initiative because what tastes better than growing your own local fruits and ingredients to go into your pot as we all become chefs at home? So that's one of the initiatives that we want to promote as well. Let's use materials we have at home and let's create a garden, an insect-friendly garden that will help with pollination, beautify, make the place more aesthetically pleasing, but also reduce our independence on imported foods that increase pollution as they're transported and come in all these plastic wrappings anyway. Buy local, support local groups, grow local, and we're helping our economy overall. Thank you. Right. Now, you've spoken a number of things. One, the reducing plastic waste. And it's one thing to reduce the plastic waste. It's another thing in terms of plastic disposal and where it is disposed. I come back to that. Dianeel, what, what better can be done in terms of um, beach maintenance and beach management with respect to, to plastics ending up on our beaches and getting into the ocean? How can that be better managed? I think our people need to be more conscious and to own their garbage. Um, people don't want to be associated with, with their garbage. And, some years ago, uh, when we first started our journey with Sustainable Travel International, we had come up with an idea of a campaign to deal with the same issue of litter on beaches. And we were laughing because uh, we said we would call it um, carry, carry your one. Carry your one. Is, carry your garbage are your one. That, and it was funny because the lady who came from the United States, she couldn't say it. So it was very funny to us. But all we were basically saying, it belongs to you. Take it with you. You go to the beach and you leave the garbage there. And that's where a lot of the, the, the problems that we have on the, the beaches that Darian referred to, the recreational beaches. People go there for picnics. 
And you'd be surprised at some of the types of garbage when we do our beach cleanups that we find on these beaches. Um, people take them and they do not take them away. As a matter of fact, the Ministry of Tourism, we went so far as to create an area for people to dump their garbage at Cockleshell Beach. Um, but we still have challenges because people still not using um, the, the area for dumping their waste. People still refuse to take their waste with them. It's actually better. You brought it there, take it back. Right? It's your garbage. People um, need to be more mindful of the impacts of their actions. There are consequences. And while you may not suffer the consequences now, somebody else or your children or your grandchildren will suffer the consequences of the actions you take now. Um, and I don't think that is what we would want because I think if no other time uh, we've been conscious of the fact that we need to be more mindful of our environment and how that relates to our tourism product is now. And, and what do we do right, when the, the tourism tourism plan down. We have to become more reliant on each other. And so if each one of us takes responsibility, it will make a difference overall. Each person does their own little bit. Yes, I cannot deal with all the um, million or trillion tons of garbage by myself, but if each one of us takes action and be responsible for what we generate then we would have, uh, I mean, it would make a big difference. There, there are some are go going to be naysayers and, and don't think it's necessary. We see that everywhere. But what a vast difference it would make if each person, and if, even if we only get 66%, what a vast difference that would make, especially for a small island state like ours. Mm. I, I don't, yes, we have a call. Working for you, good afternoon. Hello? 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 Yes, uh, yes, good afternoon. Good I have afternoon. a question here for anybody there in the panel. Uh, I was listening to the CMO, and I thought I heard her say, if a person come in and is quarantined for 14 days in a government facility, they have to pay fine with the U.S. dollars? Well, well, well this, this, pro, this program is not for that. Oh, this is working for you. One. Maybe you can ask yeah. that question this afternoon at the NEOC briefing, okay. which starts at 5 p.m. Okay. Right. At the NEOC briefing. Okay. Working for you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Les Roy. Yes, good afternoon. As usual, wonderful program. Thank you. Yeah, I know. I like the topic of the plastic, the use of plastic. But we forget that the Bible says in, 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 in the latter days, knowledge shall increase. And if knowledge increase, why they have these plastics? No, I don't against anybody littering with plastics, whether upon land or in the sea. Because they are very destructive on land, like they are in the sea. But can you imagine what will happen to somebody who has an umbrella? made out of paper when we in coming that's one and the plus the use of the plastic it has two uses a good use and bad can you imagine what will happen if you put a box of five pound frozen chicken wing wrap it up in paper and put it in your bag and then you put in uh, a five pound bag of flour next to that what will happen to that so that is the good use of the plastic but they have to find a way Creative a way, create a way to dissolve the plastic without interfering with the environment, of, with the pollution that comes off of that. Otherwise, we ain't gonna get no way. But good program anyhow. I'll listen up to you. Thank you very much. said um, with respect to the plastic yes we are not going to totally eliminate plastic as a matter of fact when when we first heard about the increased use of single-use plastics because of COVID 
people started asking, how could you bring plastic-free July when people are going to now need to use plastic more? But we actually have, uh, we launched to, um, a competition which we are in, in which we are encouraging people to repurpose plastic. Kenesha mentioned one aspect of it. We have a full competition and we are encouraging people from today to the 13th of July to repurpose their waste plastic. So you can take it, you can make jewelry, as Tishana spoke of in the DIY um, video that we're going to be launching on, on Monday, showing people how to make stuff out of plastics. Uh, we asking people to make, use it to make household items, and we see a lot of these on Pinterest. We also say you can use your plastic to make art, pieces of art, whether 2D or 3D. We leave it up to you. We call that segment Creatively You. We are even including our children, ages 4 to 12. We have a special segment for that group. Make your, pla your items from plastic, repurpose plastic, because we want to start with the young people. We purpose your plastic, bring it into the Ministry of Tourism between the 1st and the 13th of July, enter it into the competition. You have an, a, an opportunity to win some really attractive prizes. As a matter of fact, we have a first federal um, credit union who has agreed to be our premier sponsor for that um, repurposing plastic competition, which we call the Solution to Pollution. So we have that event that is coming up. So we don't want you to put your chicken in a paper bag next to your flour in the paper bag. You can use the plastic. And what we are saying is if you can, since it was made to last 100 years, see how many out of the 100 years you can get out of that same plastic. Remember what the CMO said because you mentioned the CMO, use soap and water. <laughs> yes. Now while we are talking about plastic ending up in the ocean and so on. Yes, it's most plastic that ends up there. But no sort of pollution of marine life we should tolerate. You have all kinds of things ending up in the ocean. You see shoes, you see condoms, you see diapers, um, lighters, all kinds of things ending up in the ocean. So yes, plastic but we should not litter. We should not litter the ocean, marrying litter. And I don't know how much of this happens, but in terms of vessels, sea vessels, how do they police this in terms of if people are throwing things overboard into the ocean and so on? That really should not happen. So there should be strict litter laws especially on marine vessels, for people not to throw um, litter overboard into the ocean. You know? As a matter of fact, one of the videos you showed pointed out that 80% um, of the marine pollution comes from the land, which it suggests land. land side. So only about 20% would come from users of the marine environment. Mm -hmm. I think generally people who uh, depend on the marine environment for their livelihoods pay more attention. Yes. They also have uh, um, legislation that address those issues. People are found um, doing certain things. They will not be allowed to further operate. Right. And, and so those are, are some of the areas that we deal with to address those issues. But they're generally more attuned to what the, the marine environment. For example, a lot of litter can cause problems for people who have pleasure craft like boats or other motorized vessels where the, yeah. the waste can end up getting caught in their, mo their engines mm -hmm. and destroy the vessel. And then they have problems in getting them repaired because those things are very expensive. So they become more conscious of that sort of thing. I know one local company that does a catamaran cruise They've made an effort to do some training of their staff. They actually just recently employed what, what they call their sustainability officer because they're looking at issues related to those things that would impact the marine environment. And that, that company has started that work. And we are hoping that other companies 
will get on board and do similar things where they are mindful of that. As a matter of fact, we have what we call the heart of St. Kitts Sustainability Charter, which we want to encourage um, tourism-related businesses to sign on to, and it addresses those issues. We have our last caller for today. Working for you, good afternoon. Good afternoon. We seem to have lost that caller. We have to be wrapping up. We've come to the end of our program. Is there anything that you would like to say before we leave? I just want to um, share one other event that my colleague missed, which we really want people to get on board. This year, for the first time, we are going to have what we, we call a virtual motorcade for Plastic Free July. Um, in previous years, what we would do, we would have a match around downtown. Uh, because of the pandemic, so we are integrating what we are doing and bearing in mind all the, the need for physical distancing. And so this year, we decided we'll have a virtual motorcade around the island. It's not the traditional motorcade, so no, don't get in your vehicles and come and join us. That's not what we want. We want you along the roadside bearing the physical distancing in place. Um, in mind, with your posters, your banners, your costumes, um, ready to be interviewed, speaking to the message of, of the need for us to reduce single-use plastics. We are saying uh, for this year, Plastic Free July, single-use plastic free, where we are heading in SKB and NEV. And so we want people to get on board. It's going to be on the 25th of July, and uh, we're going to give you the time um, later on in the month about when we're going to start. But please bear in mind, it's not for persons to join us in vehicles on the road. Join us by standing on the island's main road with your posters, your banners, and your costumes that speak to the message of reducing single-use plastics for the health of our country. Okay. As we promote Nevis naturally, and as we want to promote more eco-friendly tourism in St. Kitts and Nevis, we should recognize and want to preserve some of the wonderful resources we have. We have a very unique environment. Nevis has the first hotel in the Caribbean built next to the hot springs. And the hot springs themselves are unique to other hot springs. Our hot springs support recreational use. We go there and bathe. It's therapeutic. It transitions into the bogs, which supports, you have a mangrove bogs, that's an aviary for birds, as well as it's a nursery as well for sea life. And that transports nutrients into the oceans when the bank breaks. And we have this interaction of the ocean and the land right there through that. And so when we pollute, we often find things washing down through this. And it's going to contaminate this natural resource that put us on the map in the first place. Mm -hmm. So we need to take care of our resources. We have a waterfall on Nevis, one of the smallest islands in the Caribbean. Waterfalls, these natural features. St. Kitts has beautiful natural features and historical sites that are globally known. We must maintain and protect what resources we have to build our industries and to increase our livelihood sustainably. Public to subscribe to our social media page, Sink It's Sustainable Destination Council. We want to get everyone involved and participate in all the activities that we have scheduled for this month. So subscribe to the page and you'll be updated daily as we launch these activities. This is your time to take part and be aware of what we're moving towards in the future. Right. I want to thank all of you today for being on our program and for sharing on such a very important topic, that of how we can become plastic free. Well, let's face it, I don't think we'll ever be plastic free in this world, but the whole idea is to reduce the use of single plastics to dispose properly of single-use 
plastics and to use alternatives um, where we can so that plastic does not end up where it should not end up in our oceans, in our seas, in our rivers, and on land, and create problems for, for marine life and create problems for other um, forms of wildlife and so on, and even problems for our health. It creates problems for our health. So we have to be conscious of this. So I want to thank, from the Ministry of Tourism, Mrs. Dianeel Taylor-Williams, who is the Assistant Secretary and Chairperson of the Sustainable, St. Kitts Sustainable Destination Council. I also want to thank Tishana Sider Jenkins um, at the Ministry of Tourism, who is the event specialist. I want to thank Darian Edmead, who is our Environment Education Officer in the Department of Environment, and Kenesha Lewis, who is an Environmental Science Teacher at the Nevis Sixth Form. Thank you so much for being on our program today. Next week, we will be back with another edition of Working For You. Until then, I am Les Roy Williams. Take good care. You will listen to another edition of Working For You here on WinFM 9.9. Stand by, we got Conscious Business up next. WINN is 98.9. 98.9 is WinFM.